Jadavian Clowney was back in the news again, but this time it was not because he was mangling an opposing quarterback or storming out of the stadium after a heated argument with a coach. You know, like his infamous run-ins with former head coach in Houston, Bill O'Brien. Instead, we have an update from the Transaction Wire, because he has finally, after nearly half a year on the free agent market, shared his much-awaited decision with the world as to where he'll be playing football in 2020. Of course, in true Jadavian Clowney fashion, he did wait until just mere days before the start of a season that I can only imagine will be one of the strangest in NFL history. But alas, for the second time in just as many seasons, Jadavian Clowney will be playing football with a new team. This time, the Tennessee Titans. Although the deal is just a one-year contract, it could be worth up to $15 million with incentives if everything goes according to plan which gives Clowney a chance to prove he deserves a long-term deal next season. It is worth noting that the now 27-year-old Clowney had the best season of his NFL career back in 2017, when current Tennessee head coach Mike Rebell was his defensive coordinator in Houston. During that 2017 season, Clowney recorded two career bests. He registered 9.5 sacks and 21 tackles for loss that year, while playing in all 16 games. To put it simply, under Rebell, he was a monster. Not to mention the fact that Rebell also brought over a handful of assistants who worked closely with Clowney in Houston, including Shane Bowen and Anthony Midget, who acknowledged their existing relationship as an enticing bonus. Anytime you have a guy that's been in a system that has familiarity, it would help with the transition, just like Jonathan Joseph coming in here, Midget said. There's things that I can say to him in the meeting, just saying terminology that we used in Houston that translates to what we're doing here that will help him out. Just using Jonathan Joseph as an example, it helps with the transition, helps those guys learning the playbook. But while the mutual interest was obviously there, and the previous relationship was clearly a factor in both Clowney and Tennessee's decision-making process, the deal came as a surprise to many, because Tennessee was not one of the teams that was repeatedly linked to the defensive end. And there was a point during free agency that it seemed like he was linked to half of the league, but no one could pin down exactly who was going to pony up and pay the man. It even got to the point that teams were trying to create new ways to acquire players to bring him in. But we'll touch more on that later. Early on in his free agency process, the general consensus seemed to be that Clowney was going to re-sign with Seattle, who had strung together a fair amount of assets to bring him into the fold just before the beginning of last season. Sending the Houston Texans, Jacob Martin, Parkevius Mingo, and a third round pick. It seemed like the deal, in a weird way, kind of worked out for both teams. Even though it was negotiated from a point of contention, following Clowney's semi-public fallout with the suits running the show in Houston. Houston got the cap relief they were looking for, as well as some other relatively valuable assets, in exchange for a guy that they felt was not going to be there at the end of the season. And Seattle got a dominant edge rusher to bring in as a reinforcement for a defense that, let's face it, was living off its Legion of Boom reputation that, in reality, hit a screeching halt many, many moons ago. Besides, both Houston and Seattle made the postseason anyways. And from Clowney's perspective, at the end of the day, he got to leave town and play for a contending team. One that he didn't feel had personally slighted him. Oh, and on the field, he balled out, no matter what the media pundits who tried to downplay Clowney's impact in Seattle say. Because if you ask me, that means all those folks did was take a quick glance at Clowney's counting numbers in Seattle. I get it, the numbers were down a little bit from the standard he set in Houston. During 13 games in Seattle, he started just 11 of them and got home for just 3 sacks. But if you watch the man play on tape, the impact he had was undeniable. Every week, pretty much no matter who Seattle was playing, Clowney would have the full attention of the opposing offensive coordinator, as teams constantly schemed around Clowney, throwing two and sometimes even three blockers his way. Next-gen stats show that, with Clowney on the field, Seattle's defense in 2019 was able to pressure opposing quarterbacks at a rate of 24.6% with a 4.8% sack rate. Without him, both numbers tanked, as they instead pressured QBs at a 17.5% rate with a 3.9% sack rate. And as is often the case with superstar talent like Jadavian Clowney, he always seemed to be playing at his best in the biggest moments. In two postseason games, he netted 12 tackles, one and a half sacks, and again was a one-man wrecking crew. I mean, I'm pretty sure I don't need to remind any Philadelphia Eagles fans about his performance during the NFC wildcard game. Clowney did quite literally knock Carson Wentz out of the game in the first quarter with a gruesome helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit that may or may not have looked a little bit dirty. 
depending on who you ask, of course. Unfortunately for Seattle, their luck did run out, and they came up short the following week, losing a heartbreaker to Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, 28-23. Although the Green Bay loss was disappointing, both the season and the trade were largely considered to be big-time successes for Seattle. Before Clowney entered the fold, there were quite varied expectation levels around the league for Pete Carroll's bunch, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. The point being is that it was not a huge surprise that heading into the 2020 offseason, all we were hearing out of Seattle was that the team was eager to find a way to keep Jadavian Clowney in town for at least another year. But Clowney, as an elite talent at a position with high demand, was one of the most sought after free agents on the market. And there were countless rumors as to where Clowney would be playing ball come 2020. Contenders from both conferences with all sorts of different defensive schemes were throwing their hats in the ring. But Seattle's courtship came up short, as they were unable to ink a deal, primarily because the asking price ended up climbing way too high for them. So they rerouted and shocked the rest of the league, negotiating a blockbuster deal that brought in all-pro safety Jamal Adams from New York. An amazing acquisition, but one that all but guaranteed Jadavian Clowney would be playing elsewhere. Because you don't trade for a guy like Adams if you aren't going to extend him. And that, like Clowney, won't come cheap. But Clowney was determined to cash in on his first real shot at free agency. And how could he not? He must have been looking around the league and got excited seeing the massive boom that was going on in the market for defensive linemen and thought, okay, it's my turn. The numbers back it up too. According to OverTheCap.com, a site that tracks NFL player contracts, as of this season, there are now 13 defensive linemen who are making at least $17 million in average annual salary per year. So, you know what? He kind of had a point. The $13 million that Seattle was offering him was clearly below market value. Just like the money he was making in Houston, where the most he ever hauled in was also $13 million. A number that, while objectively large, he continually outplayed when he was on the field. So, it's not a huge shock he went chasing the bag this time around. But what was a shock was that, at 11th hour, the New Orleans Saints almost were able to slide in and scoop up Clowney with a tactic that has never been done in the NFL before. Because they have a tight cap situation, but wanted to compete with Tennessee's healthy contract offer, New Orleans brought a third mystery team into the mix, who is willing to sign Clowney and immediately turn around and trade him to New Orleans to circumvent their cap restrictions. Check out Sean Payton's comments to ESPN on the process. We felt like we got close, Payton said. We weren't able to match the money, and that's one of the challenges each year when you're going after a player. And it was one thought, just creatively relative to, essentially having a team sign a player, take some of the financial burden away from the team they trade him to, and essentially then get a draft pick back. Basically, Saints general manager Mickey Loomis proposed that the team send a second round pick to an unspecified organization that has been rumored to be the Cleveland Browns, and apparently the NFL had initially responded positively to the Saints query. But after reviewing its bylaws, they ultimately nixed the idea. It shouldn't come as a surprise that it was the Saints who were again pushing the boundaries when it comes to managing the salary cap, as they keep deploying new, innovative ways to bring in talent each offseason despite consistently being right up against the cap. Unfortunately, Fortunately for New Orleans, it was ultimately disallowed, and they were left with a final offer for Clowney that was roughly $2 million lower than Tennessee. That's not to say they didn't roll out all of the stops and try to make Clowney in New Orleans happen. According to John Clayton, Sean Payton and two high-ranking assistant coaches went out to see Clowney to take him out for dinner and one last plea for his services, and to buy some time for Loomis to negotiate with the NFL and the Browns. In true form, Clowney changed the itinerary on them last second and instead invited the coaches into his humble abode for dinner, where his private chef whipped up a meal for the four of them. And while I'm sure they enjoyed whatever gourmet dishes were prepared, the answer they got from Clowney was surely a disappointment. As the added financial gain and Clowney's previous relationship with Rebel and his crew in Tennessee put the Titans over the top, it was a wrap for New Orleans, who essentially ended up just driving the value of the defensive end's new deal up. But apparently, the Saints may have been further away from landing Clowney than they thought, as reports have since surfaced that once the rumors of the revamped sign and trade concept got out, the Baltimore Ravens were immediately on the phone and scheming up a deal of their own, one that would have had the Jaguars sign Clowney and trade him to Baltimore, in a similar fashion to what New Orleans and Cleveland had worked out. But at the end of the day, the league put a kibosh on the whole thing, and after an exhaustive half a year as a free agent, during which he repeatedly fired and unfired his agent, 
Boss Cook, Judavian Clowney was officially a member of the Tennessee Titans. Although, it is entirely possible that Clowney is not active for week one, as COVID-19 has added a whole new slew of barriers, it should be interesting to see if he can provide a similar boost to Tennessee like he did in Seattle last season. The Titans were one of the more exciting young teams in football last season, and adding a talent like Clowney could be exactly what they need to get over the top. And plus, if he plays well, we get to watch another episode of Clowney vs. Free Agency next offseason, when this one-year deal expires. And who wouldn't want to watch that soap opera unfold? But hey, do you think Clowney made the right decision choosing the Titans over the Saints? Join us in the comments section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton, and hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.